So even the first experiment is to determine the ethnoic acid content of vinegar. Now I should know vinegar is just a dilute solution of ethnoic acid. So the concentration of ethnoic acid in the vinegar can be determined by titrating it with an accurately known solution of sodium hydroxide. There lies the problem, however. Sodium hydroxide is not a primary standard. It's not stable enough. It absorbs water very readily from the atmosphere and it reacts with carbon dioxide in the atmosphere as well. So before determining the ethnoic acid content of the vinegar, we need to work out the exact concentration of our solution of sodium hydroxide. This will be done by making up a standard solution of oxalic acid. Now oxalic acid is a primary standard, so we can make up a solution of accurately known concentration of oxalic acid. We can then use that to work out the exact concentration of our sodium hydroxide solution. And then using the sodium hydroxide solution, we can work out the concentration of ethnoic acid in this vinegar by titration. So, there's four distinct steps to this experiment. So the first part of the experiment is making up a standard solution of oxalic acid. The second part is using the oxalic acid solution to determine the exact concentration of our sodium hydroxide solution. And the third step will use the sodium hydroxide solution to determine the ethnoic acid concentration in the vinegar sample. And in the fourth step, we'll check the validity of the method by analysing a control sample. This is a sample which we know the concentration of the ethnoic acid and can use it just to check that your method actually did give reliable results. So what I'd like you to do now is to watch three short videos which demonstrate how to carry out this experiment safely and accurately. So in the first part of the experiment, you're going to make up a standard solution of oxalic acid. Now, oxalic acid is a primary standard. It has the formula COOH twice, and it looks like this. That. Okay, so we get a clean 100 cubic centimetre beaker, put it on the balance, wait till the reading settles down, and then tear it. So it's reading 0, 0.00. The last, the third decimal place might flicker around a bit, there's not much we can do about that. We now want to add approximately 3 to point grams of the oxalic acid. Okay. It doesn't need to be exactly 3.2 grams, but we do need to know exactly how much we do add. Be careful not to spill any of it on the pan of the balance. Yeah, that's close enough. So 2.973 grams. Okay, so now that you've uh, measured out your oxalic acid, it's important that you immediately record the result in your data booklet. So 2.973 grams. Right. right, the next thing you want to do is dissolve the oxalic acid and transfer it quantitatively into a 250 cubic centimetre standard flask. So it says in the instructions, add approximately 50 cubic centimetres of deionized water. So I'm just going to use the markings on the side of the beaker to judge approximately 50 cubic centimetres. Okay. And now we want to get that fully dissolved. So it's going to take a few minutes with a bit of stirring to get this all fully dissolved. Okay. Okay, so that looks as if all the oxalic, oxalic acid is completely dissolved. Now it's important when you take the glass rod out to wash it down so we're not losing any oxalic acid. We're then going to transfer it into a 250 
Greek St. Peter standard flask using a funnel. And we're going to wash down the sides of the beaker. And transfer the washings. And we'll do that a couple of times. And we can be pretty confident now that we have transferred all our oxalic acid into 250 standard flask. So the next thing to do, actually I'll keep that back in, is to make this up to the mark, which is approximately here. So don't need to be too careful at first. As you get to the start of the neck, you'll want to start doing it far more carefully. Okay, so as we get near the mark, start adding it more slowly. And then at the very end, I'm going to add the last few drops using a dropping pipette. So the bottom of the meniscus is right at the mark. And I think that looks pretty good. Yep, I'm happy with that. So the final thing to do is just stop with the flask and invert it a couple of times to make sure Oxalic acid is homogeneously mixed throughout the solution. And label your beaker with your name on it so it doesn't get confused with any other groups. Okay, so the number of moles of oxalic acid is given by mass over the GFM. So 2.973 divided by 90. 0 0.0330 moles. So the concentration of our oxalic acid solution is the number of moles divided by the volume. So 0 0.0330. The volume was 250 cubic centimetres. So that's 0 0.25 litres. So the concentration of our oxalic acid is 0 0.132 moles per litre. And it's appropriate normally to give your result to three significant figures. Now you'll find in your tray a bottle of approximately 0.1 moles per litre sodium hydroxide. Now in the second part of the experiment, you're going to find out the exact concentration of your sodium hydroxide by carrying out a titration with your standard solution of oxalic acid that you've just made up. Next thing we want to do is to transfer 10 cubic centimetres of the oxalic acid solution into a conical flask. But the first thing we have to do is to wash out pipette with some of the oxalic acid solution. So we half our pipette and empty it into the sink and then we're ready to transfer. So we put the pipette into the solution, suck it up to it's above the mark, take it out of the solution and then let some back out till we reach the correct mark. And once we're happy that we have exactly 10 cubic centimetres in our pipette, we can then transfer that to our conical flask. Followed with a few drops of our phenylphthalein indicator. The next thing we have to do is fill up our burette with our approximately 0 0.1 mole per litre sodium hydroxide solution. So initially we have to clean the burette with some of the solution. Then fill it up with the sodium hydroxide solution to above the zero.
then run sum out so it's below the zero and the bottom of the burette is filled with sodium hydroxide solution. So I'm now ready to do my first rough titration. So I record the starting volume. And I then add the sodium hydroxide in quite quickly because this is just a rough titration. I'm just trying to find out roughly how much sodium hydroxide I'm needing to add. Is it 5 mils or 50 mils? So the solution's gone pink. I record my final volume. And I find out that the volume required was 21.4 cubic centimetres. So I'm ready to do my first accurate titration. So I pipette another 10 cubic centimetres of the oxalic acid solution into the conical flask, add a few dots of indicator, and then I'm ready to do my first accurate titration. So I record my initial volume. Add just under 20 cubic centimetres quickly, since I'm pretty sure it won't go in less than 20 cubic centimetres. Now I start adding very small amounts of sodium hydroxide. Wash down the sides of the beakers in case there's been any splashes. Continuing adding very small volumes of the sodium hydroxide and stopping when I get a permanent pink colour. At which point I record my final volume and work out my first accurate titration. So my first accurate titration gave me a tighter volume of 20.9. Let's say my second accurate titration gave me a tighter of 20.7. At higher level, those two tighter volumes would be concordant because they're within 0.2 of each other. But at advanced to higher level, we expect concordancy to be 0.1 cubic centimetres. So we need to go and do a third accurate titration. If we got the value 20.8, now we do have two results that are concordant. Indeed, we've got three results here which are all well, the 20.9 and 20.8 are within 0.1 of each other, and the 20.7 and 20.8 are within 0.1 of each other. So, in this situation, we take the average of all three results, which will give us an average volume of 20.8 cubic centimetres. To calculate the concentration of the sodium hydroxide solution, well, first thing we have to do is work out how many moles of oxalic acid were in the conical flask. So the concentration of oxalic acid was 0.132. It was 10 cubic centimetres, so 0 0.01 litres. So it was 0 0.00132 moles of oxalic acid in the conical flask. Now from our balanced equation up here, we see that one mole of oxalic acid reacts with two moles of sodium hydroxide. So if we had 0 0.0132 moles of oxalic acid, we must have had 0 0.0264 moles of sodium hydroxide in our titer. So the concentration of sodium hydroxide number of moles divided by the volume so 0 0.00264 moles divided by a volume which was 20.8 cubic centimetres or 0 0.0208 litres which gives us a concentration of 0 0.127 moles per litre. So that is an accurate concentration of our approximately 0.1 mole per litre sodium hydroxide solution. In the third part of the experiment, we are now going to determine the ethanoic acid content of this vinegar sample. By carrying out titration with the sodium hydroxide solution 
which you now know the concentration of very accurately. So the first thing we're asked to do is take 25 cubic centimetres of our vinegar solution into our prior washed out pipette, put it, transfer it into a 250 cubic centimetre volumetric flask and make it up to the mark. So we're going to be doing our analysis on a diluted sample of our vinegar. We then transfer 25 cubic centimetres of our diluted vinegar sample into a conical flask. We we'll add a few drops of indicator and then we're ready to start doing our titrations with our previously standardised sodium hydroxide solution. So we'll do a rough titration and then as many titrations as necessary to achieve concordancy. So here are some made up results for my titration of white vinegar against the sodium hydroxide solution. So let's say my rough titration gave me a titer of 16.2. My first accurate titration was 16.3. Although those two are within 0.1, they cannot be counted as concordancy because you never use your rough one for concordancy. So let's say I was really good and my second titration was also 16.3. So those two are concordant, give me an average volume of sodium hydroxide of 16.3 cubic centimetres. So now I have to calculate the concentration of ethanoic acid in the diluted sample of white vinegar. So the number of moles of sodium hydroxide required, C times V, the concentration, as determined in the previous experiment, was 0.127 moles per litre. The volume was 0.0163, giving me 2.07 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. Now, from the balanced equation, you can see that the ethanoic acid and the sodium hydroxide react in a 1 to 1 ratio. So the number of moles of ethanoic acid is going to be the same. So the concentration of the ethanoic acid will be number of moles divided by the volume. So number of moles is 2.07 times 10 to minus 3 divided by the volume which was 25 cubic centimetres. So 0 0.025 which gives a concentration of 0.0828 moles per litre. Finally, we have to calculate the concentration of ethanoic acid in the white vinegar, not the diluted sample. So, if you remember, we started with a vinegar bottle and from that we made a diluted sample. which is the one that we titrated. We took 25 cubic centimetres of the vinegar and diluted it to 250 cubic centimetres. So a 10, 10 times dilution went from 25 to 250. So what we've just calculated here was the concentration of dilute vinegar, which was 0 0.0828. So the concentration of the vinegar must be 10 times greater than that, 0 0.828 moles per litre. And when that was diluted by a factor of 10, it gave that concentration. So this is our answer. Uh, the concentration of ethanoic acid in our white vinegar was 0 0.828 moles per litre according to these rather made-up results.
So, we've now worked out the concentration of ethanoic acid in the vinegar sample. But to give you an idea of whether or not your method worked, you're now using the exact same technique going to analyse the ethanoic acid content of a control sample. That is one of accurately known concentration already. So we know that this bottle contains a solution of one mole per litre ethanoic acid. So you're going to see if the technique that you've just used gives you that value for this control sample. 